Hi everybody, this is Cindy from Ideas Times 2. Welcome back to our channel. Today I have a tutorial for you for the Belgian secret binding. And this method is a lot of fun to do. It's very easy to do. In fact, it's easier to do than it looks. And it's probably easier to do than it will be for me to demonstrate how to do it. Uh, so hopefully you'll stick with me today and uh, see how to do this very fun, uh, impressive uh, binding. Um, this is actually my cat's favorite method of binding because the string that you use um, to bind the book is very, very long and she always thinks we're just playing. So um, I used, obviously, an old Scrabble board. This is from the 1940s and I didn't want to cover it and uh, add a, a separate spine. So uh, you can see that with this binding, the uh, front and back and spine are all three separate pieces, and that spine is held in there just with the tension of the thread. And so for uh, using uh, my Scrabble board, uh, my vintage Scrabble board, this method um, is perfect because it allowed me to keep all of the pieces uh, clear as to what they were. And so uh, the front and back covers both can fold completely back and under, uh, which is really cool. Uh, makes it easy to write in your, uh, write in your journal. And um, uh, let's, uh, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is prepare your cover. And so all three, all three pieces, front and back cover and a separate spine, Need to be completely finished before you can start. You'll need to um, make sure even the, you know, if you're using end papers, that you have those glued in before you start because you're going to be punching holes and you won't be able to add anything later. So make sure everything is complete. Um, I was going to show you how I put the holes in there and, and make the template and all of that, but I had to start the video over because my cat has been really obnoxious today and uh, I didn't have another uh, another board uh, uh, to show you uh, from scratch how I did this, but there are my three pieces. And uh, the only thing that I did to prepare these is to put a cloth uh, book binders uh, tape around the edges so they're not raw. And so line up your pieces. The uh, front cover will be on your right side, the back cover is on the left, and the spine, of course, in the middle. So one of the first things I do is to make a template. So this is the template. It's nine inches by two inches, and I marked off um, one inch lines, and then one down the middle, and on each end I have a quarter inch mark uh, so that I can uh, use the same template to punch the holes in my signatures. and um, what I do, and I know some people don't do this, but it, it works for me. Uh, instead of just putting a dot, I actually will use my pencil and draw a full circle uh, because until somebody invents a hole punch that is clear and you can see through, uh, I find it easier um, to see where the hole needs to go when I'm using my crocodile or really any hole punch. Um, so I find that when I have the holes there, I can actually keep the holes in line better than if I'm using just, just a dot. So uh, the crocodile is the perfect tool to use for this because um, it's got a lot of torque and you can actually get through a pretty heavy, uh, heavy board. So uh, you can see um, it holes went through really well and on my actual book cover, you can see that I put eyelets in there, uh, the large eyelets. Uh, but if your board is pretty sturdy, you don't even uh, need to put the eyelets. I just happen to like them because I think they are a little more professional. And with the uh, game board, the eyelet actually just barely goes through, but it does. And so it holds it in there uh, pretty well. Uh, but if you don't like the eyelets or the look of the eyelets, you know, don't worry about them. And uh, your cover is going to be something fairly sturdy anyway. 
So they're definitely not, not necessary. It's just my personal preference. So uh, once you have everything prepared and you have all three of your pieces, you're going to want to line them up on your desk and you know leave a little bit of room in between them, but you don't need too much. Uh, maybe just a uh, you know sixteenth of an inch. Really, you only need uh, to have enough um, room for your needle and thread. And um, and that's it. Uh, just really enough to uh, keep everything in line. So you're going to want to tape uh, the pieces together. And I have no idea what I was originally saying here. <laughs> My sound didn't work for some reason, so I'm doing a voiceover. I have no idea what those hands are doing on there. So my book is nine inches by five inches, and I have the holes at about one inch from the edge. And You know, if you want to go a little closer, um, that would be fine. You can even do this with uneven uh, holes, uh, but you do need to make sure that your your hole you have an even number of holes. If you don't have an even number of holes, it's not going to work. Uh, I also strongly recommend that you have your signatures prepared before you bind, um, before you make the cover. Um, you'll want to make sure that your signatures, when they are stacked on top of each other, are not wider than your spine. So on my exemplar, I um, did the inside kind of junk journal style, but, um, oops, upside down. Um, a little floating pocket there with a the popcorn bag. Uh, so it's junk journal style, but it is not embellished at all. And I did five signatures in there with about 12 pieces of paper in each one. And my spine is an inch and three quarters. So I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty good size. And this journal, this cover is nine inches by five and the spine is about two inches. So my plan is to do six signatures with about 12 pieces of paper in each one. And I'm not going to embellish it either, but um, it'll be a fun place to journal. So uh, get those aligned to make sure the top and bottom are aligned. If they're not exactly perfect, it's okay because uh, you'll be able to, um, you know, fuss with it later. So you're going to want to make sure that you uh, tape the three pieces together and you'll want to use a painter's tape. They do make painter's tape that is uh, special for a very um, delicate or fragile um, surfaces but my painter's tape was just plain old painter's tape and because my board is very fragile, I decided to use washi tape. And for a board this size, you'll probably want to have uh, maybe four pieces. And um, the washi tape really doesn't work great. The painter's tape definitely works better, but I did not want to accidentally ruin my cover. And if you're using, if your covers are covered with fabric, a regular painter's tape is not going to be a problem. Um, I probably would not use mas masking tape though or anything stronger than painter's tape, uh, even on fabric, uh, because it might pull uh, when you take it off. And I learned that lesson the hard way. I used masking tape and and ruined a um, ruined a cover. But the washi tape isn't too bad. It's not the best, as you will see when I start um, start binding. And uh, for you know, I already mentioned the book is nine inches tall. So I'd probably use four pieces, um, but you don't probably need more. You probably don't need more than that. 
I am going to put washi on the inside as well since for the purpose of uh, the demonstration, I'll be flipping it around a little bit more than I would normally. So, you know, usually when I'm doing this, I actually keep the cover pretty close to my body so I can use uh, my body to stabilize the cover. Um, but it's a little hard to do that uh, on a demonstration. So I uh, am going to try having washi tape on the inside as well as the outside. We'll see how that goes. And I'll use four pieces on the inside uh, like I did on the outside. And I'm sorry it's taking a little longer than, than I thought it would. So there we go, just a little bit of washi. Keep everything together, hopefully. And you're going to want to have the um, top, uh, the outside of your cover facing up. And the kind of thread that you use, um, you have lots of options. Uh, I'm using uh, Baker's twine today, but you could use yarn, uh, even ribbon, or uh, uh, cord, different kinds of cord. Um, and I used the larger um, hole punch, so I could have used something a lot thicker. Um, but you do want to make sure that your holes are big enough because whatever kind of thread or, or binding material that you're using, uh, it has to go through each hole twice. So you want to make sure that you're giving yourself enough room. I also recommend using a, a dull needle. Um, like I said, you're going to go through each hole twice and so it'll... Uh, make sure that it will be easier anyway for you not to uh, accidentally um, sew through um, the thread. So you're going to start from the bottom uh, on the cover si front cover side. And make sure you leave about a six inch tail. And it looks like I accidentally pulled the tail through. Uh, I don't think I mentioned how much um, thread or twine you're going to need, but you're going to need more than you think you will. So for a book this size, probably, oh gosh, six feet. And now you're basically going to weave. So you went up through uh, the back of the front cover. Now you're going to go between the front cover and the spine. And like I, I, I know I said this, I'm going to say this probably a couple more times. This is way easier to do than it is to demonstrate. So up through um, the, the back of the front cover underneath, and you're going to then uh, from the back, go between the back cover and the spine. And you don't need to worry about you know, tightening it up. Uh, you'll have time to do that, um, a chance to do that later. But basically, you're just going to weave. Um, it's all over and under. So then down through the back cover. And then up between the back cover and the spine. And it's really important that you keep your thread underneath the thread um, before. So always, always have your needle under the thread. 
And so now you're going to go over the spine and then under, back under through that first hole again. Well, actually you need to tie it first. So once you've got that first half of the row of, of on the top stitch, uh, you're just going to tie just a, a simple square knot on that tail. I try not to have it too close to the hole so it doesn't accidentally um, get pulled through uh, or too close to the spine so that it doesn't wind up getting caught in the spine and kind of um, jamming it up a little bit. And you can cut that tail. I, I would wait and cut the tail at the end. But now you're going to go back through the same hole and repeat that process. Uh, just making sure that you keep that needle uh, and thread below the previous stitch. So now you're going to go back under the spine and then back up through that space between the back cover and the spine and then down through again making sure you keep that that thread underneath and so you can see it kind of makes a almost like a chain uh, stitch there and then the back is just the opposite um, So almost like a chain. And so on the back you can see um, there are two, uh, two threads going across the back of the spine and just one on uh, the cover side. So it's kind of like a mirror of what's on the front. Now you're going to go down, um, straight down and Kind of make a almost like a it, on the back it will almost like a look like a ladder and then you're going to repeat the process and I promise I'm not going to show you you know how to fill all eight of those eight of those rows but you're going to repeat the process just now in reverse so um, working from the back cover uh, down between the back cover and the spine and then up between the spine and the front cover. And then down through the front. And then just continue weaving. You're going to go back up. See, the washi tape was not the best um, choice to use. Uh, for demonstration purposes, but it is probably what was best for my very delicate um, Scrabble boards. So now just straight across. Just always keep the um, thread below the previous stitch. I'm just going to show you the first two. See, it's just basic weaving, very simple. You know, once you get the pattern down, it's a piece of cake. And it's a lot of fun to do. It's a fun change of pace. I want to make, I have a couple of old Scrabble boards, not Scrabble, um, Monopoly boards that I'm going to do as well. So now on the other side to start the third stitch, you go straight down, kind of forming, you can see um, a ladder. It's going to just go back and forth until you get to the bottom. 
if you run out of thread, it's not a big deal. You can just, um, you know, tie a new piece in. So there we go. You can see um, I finished all eight. Holes are filled nice and sturdy. That spine's not going to come out. Uh, and it's just being held in there with the tension. And you can see on, um, you know, that ladder formation on the back. And if you used a, a thicker thread, um, like I, I did, I ran out of thread and I just had to tie uh, another piece in there. And because I'm using Baker's twine, it's a little uh, heavier than a, you know, book binder's thread. So I'm going to use my bone folder to kind of press down on the on the knots, flatten them a little bit so it's a little a little neater. And for the sake of time, I am not going to show you today how to sew in the signatures. I will do that uh, tomorrow uh, or Tuesday in the next couple of days. I'll film the next part. But see how easy that was. It's such a fun, a fun little project. Simple, simple. Much easier to do than it looked like in my demonstration, I promise. So, yeah, even with the washi tape, I did pull a little bit of that paper off. I'll have to grunge it up a little bit with some ink and hide that spot. So thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you come back for part two. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please... Uh, please do so. We love our subscribers. Uh, we also have a Facebook page and uh, we're, we do giveaways and have uh, free stuff and, and that on our Facebook. So, you know, check us out on Facebook. Check out our Etsy shop. The links for those are below. So have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. And... Um, I hope you try uh, this method. If you, if you do take a picture and share it with us on Facebook, we'd love to see uh, what you create. So thank you so much uh, for joining me and uh, give a <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why my sound didn't work today. Voiceovers are not my favorite way of doing stuff. But <laughs> it's easier to do a voiceover than start over. Bye-bye, everybody.